After Gambino soldier Roy DeMeo was murdered in 1983, two of his most feared crew members, Joseph Tester and Anthony Center, moved away from the Gambinos and were taken under the wing of the Lucchese crime family, where they continued their criminal careers. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organized crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the criminal careers of Gemini twins Joey Tester and Anthony Center after the murder of Roy DeMeo. Gambino soldier Roy DeMeo's body was found frozen in the trunk of his Cadillac on January 20th, 1983. According to sources, 10 days before this, DeMeo had been at Patty Tester's brother of Joey when he was shot to death by Joey Tester and Anthony Center. Some reports suggest that the Gemini twins were recruited by Lucchese powerhouse Anthony Casso to murder DeMeo the man that they had reported to for the best part of a decade. Allegedly, Casso had been approached by Gambino mobster Frankie De Chico on behalf of Paul Castellano. After the Gambino's own internal efforts, including asking John Gotti to carry out the hit, had failed. This version of events is open to debate, as some suggest that it was in fact DeMeo's captain Nino Gaggi who set him up to be killed. But with regards to both of these theories, the common denominator is that it was Joey Tester and Anthony Center who pulled the trigger on DeMeo. Roy DeMeo's son Albert also believed that the Gemini twins were the trigger men who betrayed his father. In his autobiography for The Sins of My Father, Albert DeMeo writes how he had planned to take revenge for his father's murder. But, he was run off the road by master assailants and then attacked. He wrote, I think there were four of them. All wore dark clothing and black ski masks pulled over their heads. I could barely make out their eyes, but I knew who they were. The Gemini twins. A familiar voice said, We're not going to kill you this time, Al. Out of respect for your father. But you make any more threats, we'll do what we have to do. He hit me with the butt of his gun, hard, in my left eye socket. I heard a splintering sound, then felt a blow from the other side. The last thing I remember is confusion and pain as I slipped into unconsciousness. As mentioned, sometime after Roy DeMeo's murder, Joseph Tester and Anthony Center became closely associated with the Lucchese crime family. Let's take a look at four murders that the Gemini twins were involved in on behalf of the Lucchese's. In 1986, high up members of the Lucchese crime family reached out to Joey Tester and Anthony Center to murder a Russian gangster called Vladimir Reznikov. This story is quite well known, so I will cover it quickly. Vladimir Reznikov had been trying to shake down another Russian gangster by the name of Marat Balagula. Reznikov going so far as to shoot up Balagula's office on Avenue U with a machine gun, injuring several people. Reznikov then allegedly went to Balagula's nightclub and restaurant Odessa and put a gun to his head and demanded $600,000, causing Balagula to have a heart attack. Allegedly, Reznikov was aware that his rival Russian gangster was under the protection of the Lucchese crime family but he didn't seem to care. Later, after becoming an informer, Lucchese underboss Anthony Gaspipe Casso would recount what transpired next at the 1996 hearing on Russian organized crime. Casso telling Senator Roth, Since Marat was with our family, and especially since he was such a moneymaker for us, this was not just a threat against Marat. This was a threat against the Lucchese family as well. We knew what we had to do. Vic and I agreed that Vladimir had to be killed. We took this situation to Christy Tick, who agreed that we could have Vladimir killed. Vic gave the hit to Joey Tester. 
We asked Marat and one of his guys to get us some information to identify Vladimir. One of Marat's guys got us his picture and license plate number. We had Marat call Vladimir and arrange to have lunch with him at the same Russian restaurant in Brighton Beach where Marat was threatened. After leaving the restaurant, Vladimir was shot and killed. Senator Roth, now you testified that Marat Balagula was a leading figure among Russian organised crime in Brooklyn. Why would he contact you after he was threatened by another Russian? Mr Casso, because Marat was with our family, so the proper thing to do was just what he did, to contact us to handle it. Senator Roth, did Balagula actually ask you to have Reznikov killed or simply to make him back off? Mr Casso, no, he wanted him killed. He was deathly afraid of him. Senator Roth, did you receive any payment for killing Reznikov? Mr Casso, none whatsoever. Senator Roth, was Joey Tester given any payment for killing Reznikov? Mr Casso, none. Senator Roth, was Joey Tester ever charged with killing Reznikov and where is he today? Mr Casso, he was never charged with that murder and he is at a federal prison also. Author Philip Carlo's entertaining but somewhat biased biography on Anthony Casso provides us with a more descriptive and colourful version of the Reznikov hit. Joey and Anthony, two star players from Roy DeMeo's infamous crew and the killers of Roy DeMeo, each with scores of murders under his belt, two of the most psychotic killers ever produced by LCN, were in Anthony Center's car, keyed up, waiting, cocked and exceedingly dangerous. They had watched Reznikov pull up and with the plates and photo they had, confirmed that it was him. They waited. Joey was to be the trigger man, Anthony the wheel man. He'd pick up Joey and make sure they got away unscathed. A second car would act as the blocker behind Anthony and Joey and stop any kind of pursuit. Their escape was already carefully mapped out. They'd take the first right, go to the Belt Parkway a few blocks away, then head east, quickly disappearing in the fast-flowing traffic toward Canarsi where they both grew up and knew the streets as well as their blood-stained hands. As though in a well-choreographed ballet of death, when Vladimir Reznikov opened the door to his car, Joey Tester, tall and thin and muscular, full-lipped and angry-eyed, as focused as a hungry lion spotting prey, stepped from Anthony Center's car and made his way towards Reznikov, approaching him from behind, taking fast, silent steps. Before Reznikov even knew he was there, Joey raised a 9mm Beretta, took aim and began firing, hitting Vladimir in the head, neck and upper torso with numerous shots, killing him instantly. Anthony Center pulled up, Joey quickly got in the car, then went right on Coney Island Avenue and was soon speeding east on the belt. The Vladimir Reznikov hit was reported internationally, mainly based on the idea that a Russian gang war was about to erupt in Brooklyn. The Daily Telegraph in the United Kingdom reported, The latest murder came at the end of last week when Vladimir Reznikov, 44, left the Odessa restaurant on the avenue and walked to his car parked nearby. As he settled behind the wheel, two men in a light green Plymouth car drew alongside. One man got out. According to witnesses, drew a gun identified as a 308 calibre automatic pistol equipped with a silencer and shot Reznikov six times before driving away at speed. What has convinced the New York police that they have a gang war on their hands is that Reznikov had been a major suspect in the killing of another Russian emigre in February. His business partner, Michael Vax, 27, was charged with this murder and is currently free on bail awaiting trial. Ultimately, as Anthony Casso recalled to the senators at the 1996 hearing on Russian organised crime, Joey Tester was never charged for the Reznikov murder. On September the 14th, 1986, an attempt was made on Anthony Casso's life. Gambino captain Angelo Ruggiero had ordered Michael Mickey Boy Paradiso to murder Gaspipe. 
Some sources suggest that this hit was retaliation for the murder of Gambino family underboss Frankie DeChico, whereas others state that the motive was related to a dispute over a drug deal between Ruggiero and Casso. Either way, Mickey Boy Paradiso recruited a team of associates to carry out the hit. They comprised of Gambino captain Danny Marino's nephew, James Jimmy Heidel, Robert Baring, and Nicholas Guido. As we know, Anthony Casso survived the hit and then started to track down members of the hit squad. Through the corrupt mafia cops, Stephen Caracappa and Louis Epolito, Casso was able to have James Jimmy Heidel delivered to him. Famously, Casso tortured Heidel horrendously before killing him, and Heidel allegedly gave Casso the name of Nicholas Guido as one of his accomplices. Then Casso, through associate Bert Kaplan, was provided the address and photo of Guido from corrupt cops Caracappa and Epolito. Anthony Casso was told that Nicky Guido was a big lad who lived in the Court Street section of Brooklyn. Gaspipe then assigned Lucchese mobsters George Georginek Zapola and Big Frank Lastarino the task of tracking down Guido and killing him. Zapola and Lastarino then recruited associate Joey Testa to be part of the hit team. However, as is famously known, the Mafia cops incompetently provided Casso with the details of the wrong Nicholas Guido. And so, tragically, on Christmas Day 1986, a 26-year-old telephone installer was viciously gunned down in a case of mistaken identity. His only crime being that he shared the same name as the 29-year-old Gambino associate, Nicky Guido. Whilst staking out Court Street, Zapola, Lasterino and Testa spotted a red car that they believed to be Guido's. The Mafia cops ran the plates and confirmed it was registered to a Nicholas Guido, and that he lived a few blocks away and provided a new address. Later on Christmas Day at this address, the hit team spotted a man fitting Guido's description getting in to a red sports car. According to Casso, Zapola stated that they would try to get a better look before proceeding. However, again according to Casso, Zapola stated that Frank Lasterino was adamant that this was the man that they were looking for. As the innocent Nicholas Guido sat in his sports car, Frank Lasterino and Joseph Tester approached the young man and then Joseph Tester shot him to death. The actual Nicky Guido that they were after had gone on a run to Florida, but Casso was still determined to get him, shrugging off the murder of the innocent man, saying, Hey, it's a mistake. No big deal. Casso would eventually get to lay eyes on the Nicky Guido that he was after, but only in a courtroom. In 1989, Nicky Guido was on trial for the attempted murder of Anthony Gaspipe Casso, but Casso testified that he didn't recognise him as one of his attackers. It can be speculated that not only was Casso sticking to the mob's code of silence, but also, and more likely, trying to get Guido acquitted so he could finally get his revenge. Nicky Guido was indeed found innocent of the attempt on Casso's life, but was found guilty on an assault charge and then later drug offences, which kept him in prison for the next 11 years and out of the crosshairs of Anthony Casso, who famously himself turned informer in 1994. Robert Baring, the final member of the hit squad who tried to kill Casso, became a government witness and would eventually die in prison. Anyway, back to Anthony Center and Joseph Tester. On the 3rd of September 1987, the Gemini twins were part of a hit squad that gunned down Lucchese associated mobster Carmine Variali and Bonanno associate Frank Santora. In this case, Senta and Testa were positioned just up the block from 1508 Bath Avenue where the shooting occurred. Mob associate Frank Smith Jr. was allegedly the shooter in this homicide, authorised by Anthony Casso. Although interestingly, Carmine Variali was the only intended target. 
His friend, banana associate Frank Santora, was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. As one paper reported, the victims, tentatively identified as Carmine Variali, 31, of Staten Island, and Frank Santora Jr., 51, of 79th Street, Bensonhurst, were walking together when a car described as a late model blue Chevrolet Malibu and possibly containing three men slowed to a crawl next to them. A long-haired man in a jogging suit jumped from the vehicle, approached the two pedestrians and opened fire with a revolver, firing at least six times. Each man was hit three times in the upper parts of their bodies, police said. I cover these murders and their background in a previous video that can be seen here. And so, after working with the Lucchese's for a few years, Joey Tester and Anthony Center were rewarded by being officially inducted into the crime family in 1988. Former Lucchese acting boss turned informer Al Diarco provided the information on this, as his son Joseph was also inducted in the same ceremony. As Jerry Capisi and Tom Robbins write in Al Diarco's biography, most of the other men being inducted that evening were Joseph's age. Three of them, George Conti, Anthony Center, and Joseph Tester, were good friends. Joseph was thrilled to be joining the family with his pals. Some sources, such as Philip Carlo in his biography on Gaspipe Casso, state that Anthony Center was never inducted because he wasn't Italian. This, however, appears to be erroneous. Many northern Italian names don't end in a vowel, as is the case with Senta, whose father was of northern Italian heritage, as was his mother, who was from Rovereto, in the northeast area of Italy. After their induction, Joseph Diarco was placed in the crew of his father, Al Diarco, which had previously been run by Paul Vario of Goodfellas fame. Joseph Tester and Anthony Senta were allegedly placed in the crew of then-captain Frank Glastarino. A crew which also allegedly included mobsters such as Frank, Frankie Hart Bellino, Joseph, Little Joe Defidi, Angelo Defendis, Nicholas, Nicky Edkins Di Costanzo, and Joseph Truncali. Ultimately, Joey Tester and Anthony Center's time on the street as made men for the Lucchese crime family was short-lived. In 1989, the pair were both convicted of racketeering, including 10 murders. One paper reported, The defendants, Joseph Tester Jr. and Anthony Center, both 34, drew the life sentences for conspiring to deny the civil rights of at least two potential federal witnesses by participating in their killings. They were sentenced to an additional 20 years for racketeering, racketeering conspiracy and firearm and narcotics offences. The men were convicted with seven others in June at the second trial stemming from a 1984 indictment that originally included charges against Paul Castellano, the former reputed Gambino boss who was gunned down in December 1985. Testimony of the 16-month trial included evidence that the crew had murdered scores of people, some of whom were dismembered, and others whose bodies were never recovered. US District Judge Vincent Broderick said the crimes Tester was convicted of were so horrendous and so inhumane and so unbelievable that the only sane course that I could see for sentencing was to make sure that as long as it could be possible, you will not be available to commit any more such crimes. Broderick also fined Tester and Center $35,000. In addition, both Tester and Center were facing further charges for using cocaine in the courthouse toilets during the trial. As a 1989 newspaper reports, Tester and Sentner belonged to a mafia crew that used the bathroom of its clubhouse to slice victims into disposable parts. Crimes so horrendous and inhumane the Manhattan federal judge Vincent Broderick said he wanted them in prison as long as could be possible. The US Attorney's Office apparently wishes the same. It intends to press charges that the two men snorted cocaine in Foley Square restrooms during recess in their 17-month trial. Conviction may mean two more years in prison. In October 1988, during the eight months of the trial, the men were nabbed on drug possession charges when feds reportedly found coke on them 
and in Sentner's car near the courthouse. The charges were sealed until last week. Interestingly, both Anthony Centre and Joseph Tester were never convicted of any of the murders that they were involved in during the time they were associated with the Lucchese crime family. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.